Why do I hear boss music? Overpowered. Incredible. Ready? And magical. High level builds are everywhere. But sadly. You won't be seeing them for some time. Oof. And that's just to reach level 9. Even getting to level 5 is gonna take a while. Oh dear. But never fear. Old man is here. With a bunch of low level. Fun. And janky builds. For those first 10 hours. Just do a quick respec at level 5. Since the best level 5 builds are just solo class. You really don't want to miss out on that extra attack feature. Or those incredible third level spells. But that's enough rambling. Let's make some builds. Here we go. Nothing personal, of course. Just getting a bit too peaceful. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Zero effort. Tag anything. 22 AC. All at level 2. Basically. I'm fucking invincible! <laughs> the build's easy. Just pick these. Have work for endurance. Light Cleric for Warding Flare. 14 decks. Do the rest as you wish. We're almost done once we meet Lizelle. I'm gay. Swap that armor. Use Shield of Faith for two more. It lasts all day. Just don't get hit. And thanks to Warding Flare, you won't. Don't worry now. I won't. You can even survive hits you really shouldn't. I'm fucking invincible! We can finally see what happens when the timer hits zero. But if you can wait 20 minutes, we can become even tankier. So respect. Or start that first level as fighter. This gives con saves proficiency. So you can concentrate on spells more effectively. It even improves as you level. And pick that defense fighting style. For one more AC. Them light domain spells are also fire. Not bad for just level 2. You can level whatever you want after. Personally. I recommend continuing as fighter. It's only two more levels to become a battle master. It has useful support abilities. And can goad enemies. To only target them. It truly is. 
Fucking invincible! <laughs> Next up. You burned my house to the ground! My family's dead! What do I do? The torch is mathematically a total monster. Versus. Whoa. They are basically just clubs that are always dipped in fire. You can find them everywhere. And the first shopkeep always sells too. He gets more whenever you long rest. Just stay away from water. It really dampens the build. And avoid that grease. The only stats we need is good strength. And the two weapon fighting style. So just take fighter at level 1. Or at level 2, if you prefer the ranger. That fire resistance is nice. Feel free to multi-class into anything else later. It's basically extra attack before level 5. Just dump torches on everyone. And you easily punch above your weight class. Even both are used on opportunity attacks. No! I don't want that! But on your turn. You don't have to hit both times. Split it up. To maximize damage. Simple. And pretty much all chests. Are weak to bludgeoning. And most wooden things. Will also have a fire vulnerability. Cool. So just click your way through all encounters. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, oh my legs! Oh, it's too much. I'm going to jump! This build requires a bit of shopping. But no combat is necessary. Having new movement options really opens up new strategies. Even at just level 1. Like abusing the horn. Every single turn. As for the build, let's jump right in. Pick Elf for Demglaive skills. Then Wood Elf for that max move speed. Wizard. 14 int for 3 spells. We want those mobility ones. A quick makeover. And then. Bounce out of here. Keep on going. And going. And hop on over to Goblin Town. There's three magic items we require. The first is from Grad. The Swiress Shoes. For the second we need to embarrass Crusher. And another thing, you're ugly. So he leaves. And it's time for swimming lessons. No, I'm just a small little dog. 
and collect yesurably named Crusher's Ring. Finally, enter and meet Moon Glow. What are you buying? And get that glaive. You're proficient already since you're an elf. You might have to sell some unimportant things though. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is what honesty gets you. Anyways, our Olympic career begins. Oh. That already beats the female world record. The jump spell. For triple. Time to suit up. For three more meters. And that's the level one world record. Well. Without performance enhancing potions at least. Remember, winners don't do drugs. It's fun to get the jump on your enemies. Literally. Surprise, motherfucker. What the fuck? For later levels. A war cleric dip can give you some extra attacks. Three times a day. And a fighter level is nice for great weapon fighting. For some juicy damage. Hey, that's pretty decent for level 3, I guess. Don't even bother with the fleet fingers. It's completely bugged. It does nothing. But if you want them free jumps, at level 3, take two monk levels for Step of the Wind. While you miss out on armor and damage, instead you can jump with no bonus action cost. So you can end your turn across state lines. Not bad for a bonus action. They even come back on short rest too. Pretty impressive for just level 3. Although... For level 4 and above. I'd respect the Eldritch Knight Fighter. You get the mobility spells. And can take the athlete feat bigger jumps and more strength we can put our old 26 meters into the trash wow I don't even gravity is merely a suggestion and this will only improve as you gain more strength. Use a hill giant potion for a whopping 46 meters. Well that's more than enough to jump into the next video section. Why jump, when you can fly, at unlimited amounts, all at level 3, no items are even required. Begin as the fashionable storm sorcerer, for this ability, so when you cast a leveled spell, you can fly as a bonus action. This prevents opportunity attacks too. For the next two levels, 
We want Warlock. Any subclass. Make sure to select this one in vocation. This lets you cast a level 1 false life at will. Beyond the flight. It gives 7 temp HP. It's the ultimate escape maneuver. The horizontal distance traveled is increased by your elevation. Hey, hey. Get the bug out of here. And there's no vertical limit. If you can click it, you can reach it. Seriously. That ain't how ceilings work you know. Basically all metal gates. Can be bypassed. Sadly. The shield spell won't give you air miles. Unlike other reaction spells. So you can get the hell out of here. And still have your action for cantrips. The pathfinding is insane. You ain't seen nothing yet. As long as it's within 9 meters. You'll probably get there. Just reach impossible heights. For that high ground bonus. And spam them empowered Eldritch Blasts. And if you can't reach them. There's always. They really can't do anything. And you could always... Away. I can do anything! Unlock all 18 skills. All done by level 4. With only one item required. You'll also have the skill check helpers too. Not to mention you're a full caster. With lots of little spells. Be sure to pick the following precisely. Be a GIF Yankee. Cleric Knowledge Domain. Rich in Background. For these. 16 Wisdom and Charisma. Disregard it. Take Religion and History. Expertise Nature and Arcana. That's level 1 done. And at level 2. Take another cleric level. For that level 2 channel divinity. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. It behaves identically as the gift knowledge ratio. So for either one select wisdom. And the other select charisma. These knowledge moves give all the associated skills linked to that ability. Together, they gave us nine new skills. Just three to go. Now just bluff, bully, and skill your way through every encounter. 
You can do anything. Hum. I mean, you can't fail twice. Oh no. Anything. Moving on. At level 3. Take one bard level next. And for the skill, select acrobatics. Two more to go. And within the blighted village, befriend the ogres. For their assistance. And sacrifice them to any tough encounter. It's ogre, boys. Once complete, loot the ogre's body. He won't mind. Take Ranger, as the last level needed. Bounty Hunter provides investigation. And we can freely pick Athletics. Now just put on Dad Ogre's headband. To increase our int to a respectable 17. And these will only improve, as our proficiency levels up. As for those later levels, I guess you could say... I got hepatitis C! Wait, what? My life is misery, misery, it's pointless, pointless! Please, stop! Lunch, Lady Doris. Have you got any grease? Yes. Yes, we do. Then grease me up, woman! Okie dokie. Is this technically a build? Not really. Is it funny? Oh, my back! Oh, yeah. Three fall down and go boom. Three fall down and go boom too. Whoops! Grease has some very powerful properties. Falling prone on cast isn't a big deal really. But if you fall when it's your turn, it just ends instantly. Against melee builds, it's absolutely busted. Even spellcasters lose concentration when they fall down. Oh dear. I was fallen. And I can't get up. The grease spell don't need concentration. Last 10 turns. And has a huge radius. Grease bottles, however, have a much smaller radius. A dex save of 12. But the grease lasts. Forever. It ain't easy. Being greasy. There's only one shopkeeper who sells grease. Can I help you, sir? My god, you're greasy. Mr. Maruka, help! Cyril at the Risen Road Toll House sells grease bottles every long rest. When prone, they have disadvantage on deck saves. So now Sacred Flame can actually hit things. 
Acid Splash is also improved. Slightly. But you're better off. Just Eldritch Blasting. Anyway, I started blasting. It combos well with the pushback invocation. For them three turns. The grease terrain is so powerful. Just keep it away from fire. What the? My red diamond grease! No! I should have saved you. To fill your dark soul with light! Light Domain. Again. These stats. And 20 minutes later, when you reach the beach. For your level 2. Take another cleric level. And congrats! On your perfectly divine Miracle Build! This humble channel divinity with this godly radius deals some serious damage. You're gonna level pretty quick since it's like a holy hand grenade. So at level 3, take those violin lessons. And don't forget to enroll your entire team too. Oh yeah. Let's jam. Now this party's getting classy. Let's fit. Not much in Act 1 can survive. Repeated explosions. To the face. It even reaches high ground. And to get them back, just take a short rest. And you're ready to go. As for anything that can survive, multiple flashbangs. The cleric gets the most damaging level 1 spells. With inflict wounds. It even scales up nicely. And guiding bolt. Which gives free advantage too. There's also a couple of tricks. Like using the Bard's Minor Illusion to group and then blast them. Hmm. That was the practice one. Instead, use the combat dialogue prompt to push them in the detonation radius correctly. So you can return to blasting the non-believers. This build also dominates socially. So we are like the band or something. You might be thinking, how could this get any better? Well, Take Bard again at level 4 to unlock Song of Rest, which behaves as a once per day short rest, which of course means in every adventuring day, we can combine them together to get a whopping 
28 radiant dawns per day. So you can always fight fully loaded. Not to mention all that free healing. The damage even scales with character level. It ain't much though. This is easily the most effortless. Powerful. And supportive team build. Take this ugly. Thanks. I suppose. The only tough part is choosing the god with the coolest picture I think we can all agree that this one is the best for horsing around Begin as Ancient Paladin. Wunderbar. Max Wiss and Charisma. I am stupid! Ancient unlocks this ridiculous two-turn heal. It's even a bonus action. And returns on short rests. Then just kill stuff until you level up. Good to go! For level 2. Take life cleric. Ooh. Interesting. This gives all healing spells a little boost. So the divinities can't use this. It scales with spell slot used. After fighting them bubbles. Be sure to KO Devil Man Cry Baby. I am prepared to do whatever it takes. <laughs> Next say hi to Volo. And start a trade. For that bling. Hit up our boy. Rat. For his boots of AIDS. You will be level 3 already. Take a second cleric level. For that preserve life divinity. It's an action. But this one has much better range. And they both return on short rests. And finally, suit up. These all add nice little bonuses. So each and every heal, no matter the source, gives a mini bless, blade ward, and 3 temp HP. That's a lot of healing for just level 3. This really boosts the value of your lay on hands. Making it a now respectable in combat buff option. But if you really This contract's big. Don't pass this up. Want to become immortal. Kill the big three leaders. With these heals. It's achievable at just level three. And once you're done... I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. Collect your reward. Ooh. This stylish hat. This will do nicely. Very nice. Hmm. 
Not bad. Whenever you heal someone, you get up to 6 HP. I am fully charged. Get them. Rout, rout. It activates on each and every heal you do. For later levels, I'd recommend sticking with the clergy. Although, I must confess, the healing is not as rewarding as the hurting. Yeah! Victory. GG. Easy. You're a great doctor. I love doctor. Uh oh, stinky. <laughs> Human for shields. Dragon sorcerer for free armor. Max car and dex. That gives an easy 18 AC. Even in cloth armor. This build's all about maximizing that poison spray. It's the can't trip with the biggest number. Then take Twin Metal Magic at level 2. We can now twin our powerful braps. For just one sorcery point. Oh. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Well, go down under the blighted village. And defeat the giant enemy spider. Ow, my leg. Ow. It's actually pretty easy. Ow, don't let my legs go. Even at level three. Ow. Ow, my legs. And after you win. So you have chosen death. Be sure to loot the poisoner's robes. Join me, Patrick. Oh my. Now. Our poison spray. Does 1d4 damage more. To both the targets. So rather than being pure trash. It's actually kinda good. If you completely ignore all of the misses. Yeah. We're done here. Phew. And that covers just about everything. Don't read that. Anyways. Thanks for watching. See you soon, kiddos.